Hey guys, I'm Nick. Welcome to the Houston Zoo on Facebook Live. I am over in our children's zoo right now. We are so excited. Fiesta's more excited about some of the alfalfa I've got, but I'm excited because this time next week, you guys will be able to come back. We're opening up the children's zoo. And you can see some of your favorites, like Miss Fiesta here. <laughs> Fiesta is a llama. She just turned eight years old in January and she's been enjoying some of the quiet and the solitude back here while we've had the children's zoo closed, but she's looking forward to seeing you all. And then we have Zamir as well. I know he's very, very excited to see everyone with the reopening of the children's zoo. He loves getting scratched and pet. And as you look at him, you can see he's got that hump on his back and just like a camel, that hump is going to help him store fat for times when he doesn't have a lot of food. As you can see, he's got plenty of food at the moment. We'll see if we can encourage him to walk over. He's got hay in the back, but I've got some of his alfalfa, which is his favorite. And I think as soon as he realizes what I've got, he's gonna come trotting on over. Zamir, you wanna come say hi? Huh, you wanna come say hi? Yeah. There we go, so you get a good look at that hump. There you go, buddy. Oh. And like I said, Zamir loves to be scratched all over. He's very much looking forward to having guests come back through and say hi in the children's zoo. If you guys do come to visit us, just a couple reminders that the goat yard and the swap shop will still be closed, but you'll still be able to see most of your favorite animals as you explore this space, huh, Zamir? Zamir's a little bit older than his roommate Fiesta. Zamir's gonna turn 16 in um <laughs> in may he'll be turning 16 years old and as you can see he loves his alfalfa we're going to continue on one of the things that's been really nice about having the children's zoo shut down at the moment even though we love to see all of you all back here is that the keepers have been able to do a lot of training and a lot of enrichment um, working with all the different animals so we're going to go see some of those animals I know that our mongoose got some amazing enrichment this morning, um, but like some of those training things, the keepers have been able to work on their husbandry behaviors, which help us take better care of the animals. So a lot of our animals, um, especially some of the ones that are a little bit more timid or not as naturally um, confident animals, like our burrowing owls, our pelicans and ruddy ducks, they've been able to do a lot of training with them to encourage them to step on scales, to take food voluntarily, which helps with getting their medicine. So the enrichment for the mongoose is this giant palm frond with the freeze. We've lost a lot of plants, but we can still use those plants Sorry. <laughs> to provide enrichment. So I was just told our mongoose are in the back right now, but they've been back there for a little bit and are very excited to come out and explore their yard. Uh, it's also been really easy to continue to update their substrate. So all the dirt in their enclosure where they can dig their tunnels. You can see those tunnels in the back for guests as well. Um, but they can, keepers have been able to put more and more dirt in here, let the mongoose have fun digging their own burrows and tunnels as they move around. Um, now I know that a group of meerkats is called a mob, but I can't remember what a group of mongoose is called. So for any of you all watching, if you wanna pull up on Google and drop it in the chat, let us know. I'd appreciate it. Also, if you guys have any questions, be sure to drop it in the chat. We'll try to answer as many of those live as we can. And if we can't get to them on camera, we will definitely get back to you and let you know the answers to those questions. We'll give our mongoose just a moment more. Oh, I see a head started to peek out of their door in the back. They're testing it out. So they've got almost like a little dog door, little cat door that goes back into their holding. And our first mongoose is not sure. Should I come out? Should I not? Nope, maybe. Maybe what's everyone doing inside? Is something fun happening inside? No, I'm gonna poke my head back out. Sniff around. <laughs> we do know as well here at the zoo, the weather is about to turn. It's getting dark and stormy. And our mongoose are aware of that as well. So they may be taking an early retreat from the weather to hide inside. We'll try tossing some of their favorites. Looked like a little piece of fish. They should be able to smell that and hopefully they'll all come pouring out. 
I gotta make that decision. Is it worth heading outside to get something good to eat if you're gonna potentially get rained on? I don't know. <laughs> oh, getting a little bit more adventurous. Even though having more time to work with each of our species back here has given keepers the opportunity to work on those relations build that trust and strength as you guys are seeing now our animals do have a lot of choice they can choose to stay in they can choose to come out they can choose to participate in any of those training sessions and right now our mongoose look like they are oh not sure what to make of our setup over here with our cameras oh here we go just takes the first mongoose to be brave and the rest come flying out with these banded mongoose you can see those stripes along their sides and back give them that name banded mongoose they are very aware of what's going on they realize this giant palm frond is not normally part of their exhibit and they're like what is this has a lot of smells a lot of scents, things for them to investigate and they'll be able to worm their way in and out of all those fronds and incorporate it into their routines <laughs> These guys do a good job as well looking out for one another. If they sense danger, they can let out a call. And just like you saw all the mongoose come running out of that little door into their exhibit, when they hear the right alarm call, they will all immediately disappear into their variety of burrows. A lot of them seem very curious about maybe some of the bugs that might have been inhabiting this palm frond, gonna see if they can find any extra snacks. Don't know about you guys, I'd prefer not to have insects as my snacks, but our mongoose love them. <laughs> so just a reminder for any of you guys just tuning in, we are exploring our children's zoo, which is closed today, but we will be reopening the children's zoo to all guests starting next Wednesday. So next Wednesday, be sure to reserve those tickets in advance. We're still doing time ticketing. Um, but reserve those tickets online and you can come back and explore the children's zoo and see a lot of your favorite animals. We're going to continue moving on. We're going to go across our boat and see uh, if we can find some of those other animals that, like I said, have been doing a little bit of training with their keepers. So we'll walk by and we'll see our ruddy ducks, our brown pelicans. Uh, one of the things that they've been able to help further train is because it's a mixed species exhibit, we've got some ruddy ducks right up in front as well as the brown pelicans then further in the back is that at feeding time it'd be very easy for our pelicans as the larger birds especially compared to the gull or the ruddy ducks um, to kind of monopolize that feeding if any of you guys have ever gone down to galveston tried to feed any of the birds you see down there any of the gulls pelicans uh, some of those animals get a little excited about the food and it's difficult to make sure everybody gets a piece so they've been working very hard on teaching our pelicans to station so they can when it's feeding time have the pelicans stand on specific posts like you see that one pelican doing right there and the pelicans know if they're on their correct station then they'll get their food meanwhile the ruddy ducks will run over to their uh, <laughs> little secure area on the side of their beach for their meal time so it makes sure that we're able to provide the best care for all of our animals doing that and coming up on one of my favorites we're gonna see Jack the North American River Otter so Jack and Belle both called this exhibit space their home but Belle's in the back right now getting some nice rest and relaxation some time away from Jack I don't know if any of you have family members brothers sisters I've got three siblings at home, and I know sometimes they get on my nerves. It's nice to have a chance to step away from them, and that's what Belle's enjoying right now. But Jack's very excited to see all of you guys when we reopen the children's zoo on Wednesday. Very curious little otter. And we're going to see we've got some food for him as well. So it's not just the mongoose that get a treat today. I think my favorite thing about watching otters eat, regardless of the species of otter, are their table manners. So when Jack gets a treat, you'll notice he chomps down, chews up that fish, 
but he does not do it with his mouth closed. They all smack their food. I've seen our small clawed Asian otters do it, our North American river otters like Jack, and even our giant river otters in the new Pantanal exhibits. Also with some messy, messy <laughs> table manners. They can be very clean and fastidious about their coats. They like to keep their coats nice and clean as you see him swimming around. Does a good job of keeping the skin underneath very dry, but less concerned about all the fish parts that fly out of his mouth as well. Again, just want to remind you guys, Children's Zoo will be opening next Wednesday, but there will be some areas that are still closed. So unfortunately our goat yard and the swap shop will remain closed once the Children's Zoo reopens. But for any of you that are nature traders with our swap shop or want to become a nature trader with our swap shop, there's still an opportunity for you to do so. You can log online and sign up for a time slot to join our virtual traders with the virtual swap shop. It's a chance for your family to interact with our staff one on one and show off what you found out in nature, out in your explorations and earn points so that when the swap shop does reopen, you're primed and ready to go. It got very noisy over here a second ago between our birds calling out and helicopters flying by. But Jack did not seem to mind at all. Some of those other animals in the children's zoo who've had an, an increased chance to practice some new training be behaviors, some new husbandry techniques to help with their vet care. Like I said, our gulls behind me, our burrowing owl has been taught to walk across a scale so we can easily get weights on her. Sierra the bobcat as well has had a great opportunity to really forge stronger bonds with our keepers. But I don't know about you guys, I love watching Jack and Belle both just swim back and forth. They make it look so easy and effortless. All right, guys, we're almost out of time here. And for Jack, more importantly, as far as he's concerned, almost out of fish. So we're going to go ahead <laughs> and wrap up our section. Just this segment, just a reminder, if you have any last questions, drop them in that chat. We'll be sure to get back to you guys and come, come, come see us next Wednesday when the Children's Zoo reopens. We look forward to seeing you all.